Hey everyone, you are listening to the Rival and Queen podcast. I'm Ashley. And I'm Sarah. Happy oh, Thursday. I'm so excited. We have such a treat today. The best guest. We won't give away who it is right yet, but it was fabulous, Sarah, as you would say. A treat for your eyes and your ears. If you do, if you're by a computer, we recommend watching this one on YouTube because you will be blown away by our guest today. That's for sure. I uh, couldn't agree more. This is one that you must watch. <laughs> <laughs> at least look at the highlight reel. We love it. Ash, we had a very big, we are full on into December and we had a very big weekend doing tons of local Christmas shopping. Oh my gosh. I keep actually all weekend after we did that, I was thinking about how much I loved it. It made me feel full Christmas mode. Yes. Be being in the community and like seeing everyone and all the beautiful things people have in their shop right now made me so happy. It was so nice. And I think it's also a really good reminder that you can actually do all your Christmas shopping locally. And I think, you know, one of our friends, Nicole T told us earlier this year that like Amazon doesn't pay taxes in Canada. And when I thought about that, I was like, yeah, I don't want to give them all of my money. And so we pulled up, we made a list, like handwritten list last week of all the shops we wanted to go to in Halifax. We haven't gotten to all of them yet, but we, we put a good dent. I think we got to like 10 different places on Saturday. Yeah. And we had a bit of a late start to the day. So we probably would have doubled that if we were out first thing. But I think what is really important to remember is making that like list of what you need to get and where you need to go and realizing that you can get a, a lot of the things that you want in your community. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to necessarily just go online in order. It's sure it's convenient, but if you actually prepare and enjoy the day, like we did getting our coffee and going around and seeing all the different uh, things that people have, it just made it like a very fun experience. But you know what I like more is like, even if you don't have a list, I think it's kind of more fun because if you have people in mind, when you go to some of these places, like they have stuff that you've never, or like I never thought of. And I got a ton of, I got a ton of my shopping done that I didn't even think I, I would like things I didn't know exist are out there. But and see, that's sometimes I, <laughs> I just would, it's like going to the grocery store with a, a list. Sometimes I just end up overspending because I just buy everything. So I feel like you know, at least have a bit of an idea. Yeah. There's Sarah. No, bought. if I have people, I've got my budget for each person. I know, but yeah. I got like plants, ornaments. I was so impressed. I was so happy with everything. I can't wait to start wrapping. I know. Do you know, do you know what else is really an amazing local gift you can get as well? Sarah is a cans of Luvo for your stocking. Great gift to bring to parties or just drink them with your friends. Like you and I, we love Luvo. We do. So shout out to Luvo. They're sponsoring this episode. We love you guys. They are our favorite wine and they're all Nova Scotian, all Nova Scotia East ingredients, all natural, gluten-free, vegan friendly. We love them. You can learn more at luvolife.ca and you can pick them up at your local NSLC uh, and other liquor stores around, around mm. the city, and Nova three, Scotia. Three delicious flavors. And I, I can't even pick out which one I love the most because they're all delicious. I can pick up the one I love the most all the time. It's Muscat Mint. I knew, I knew you'd say that. It depends <laughs> on my mood. I love them all, but it depends on my mood that I kind of gravitate towards one or the other. Big shout out to Luba. We love you guys. And as Ashley said, definitely stick those in the stocking. This is also my favorite thing about Christmas shopping and going out is I find I just make a list of things that I want. And like I've refined my list of things that I look, I need to either buy for myself or hope I get for Christmas. That's a great point. If people are just out and about and they see stuff, they can at least email or text people what they want them to go pick them up. So go shopping selfishly, even if you want. I'm like hunting now for fancy socks. I've like obsessed that this what is what kind? I want. Like, with like a frilly... dressy sock? Yeah, I want the ones with like a frilly bow around the top. I don't know why mm -hmm. that's in my mind. And I, I have found so like... many. I'll give you some. My yeah, mom buys it... me really fancy socks, like sockettes. I think they're technically That's what I called, want. Or like pantyhose or tights no not tights what do you call them there is a name anyways I have so many pairs and they're all in the packages because I just never open them I yeah. know I'm like that's what I one of the things I've found that I want this year is some fancy socks fingers crossed it's this I, is I like adulthood Santa when you want socks for Christmas those. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, that I part's it. funny and then another exciting thing happened this weekend is that my sister got a puppy, a baby poodle. 
arrived from Ontario. And so ever since Saturday night at like 1 a.m., I've been in puppy fever mode. Yes, you have. Even when we were out shopping, you were like, I, I'm just trying to focus on too many things right now. Like you were so excited on trying to ensure that the puppy was getting um, its, you know, its delivery method back here to, to Nova Scotia. But props to you. Man, it so was pumped. it was a lot of logistics given COVID that we couldn't go get the puppy. But thanks. Thanks, B. It worked out. And uh Holy cow. I haven't, I've never been around a puppy that's like eight weeks old and she's so like a baby. Cute. It's it is seriously like, like I left there the other night thinking, cause I really, if anyone knows me, I love dogs and puppies, but I was like, I don't think I'm ready for this. This is like having a baby. Oh yeah. You need to like, I think if you've had a puppy before and like, you know how to like train them, then you're good. But literally every day. I know that Jennifer and Pat, her boyfriend and I are all looking up like what to do with a puppy on on this day and like how to start training them. I just want a mature puppy. Like I want it or not even like a dog, I guess. That's just like already trained that someone can give me, but who's going to give up a beautiful, cute puppy? I don't think anyone. So I think I, or sorry, dog. I think uh, I'd have to get a puppy to like start over. I think, well, to be fair though, all of the puppies I've had or dogs I've had in my life, we've gotten them as trained dogs. So okay. it can happen. There's hope. Yeah. Okay. Keep That's, me in mind. There is hope. And if people want the cuteness, you can follow her on Instagram at Daisy Poo HFX. Honestly, it's just worth it. <laughs> what a I'm obsessed angel. with her. She's four pounds of fluff ball. What an angel. I want a puppy. <laughs> well, Sarah, this weekend coming, we were meant to get in the holiday spirit and see an amazing House of Rivers holiday show. And unfortunately, due to COVID, it is canceled. But the ladies brought their A game. And I mean, A game with their holiday glam when we had uh, them on the show this week, which was such a treat. I know. So this week, we've got House of Rivers, Brooke Rivers, Trinity Fox, and Rachel showed up in the virtual studio. And honestly, you have to see what they were wearing. They were full Christmas glam super obsessed with they like out Sean Ashley Ashley and I look like we just had to leave change. us by the side of the road let's just like, put it out there that Sarah and I both had white sweaters on and we immediately were like no we need to put something brighter and more cheerful because they looked so fabulous I went and put lipstick on because I was just like I needed Smart. I wanted to look look the part they look so great so we had so much fun even if we, we tried Sarah we wouldn't have looked as good as they did Let's no like never we like, need Jennifer want, to glam us from head to toe I want yeah and I want them to do my makeup as well like I want to I want the glam the house of rivers glam experience that would be incredible <laughs> I think that that's what's gonna happen I can feel it and I can't believe it so and like Brooke makes so many of their costumes, which is also incredible. So very multi-talented. They lip sync, they dance, they make costumes. I don't know. It's just, and there's a lot, people there's a lot that us. goes so, into it. It's, it was, I mean, that was our first experience. Uh, we went with a group of girls uh, and I was blown away. You and I were super hungover. I know we talk about that in the podcast, but the music and everything, it just like put your spirits in such a good place. I found like, I was pumped for the Christmas and holiday show because I was like thinking there's going to be so much Mariah Carey that's going to come into our life and we're going to lose our minds. I know they are fabulous. And, um, yeah. So in this episode, they share with us how they started in drag, what it's given them, uh, you know, stepping into the queen community and how they actually transform their bodies, which is, you know, so we asked crazy. all the questions. All so. the questions from head to toe. <laughs> and I mean, exactly. I want to, I want to take some of these tips and apply them to my own body. You know what? I don't know that I will, because I feel like props, it is a lot of work. Um, I mean, I've we, worn spangs. Like, haven't you worn anything that kind of like gives you a bit of what you need in, in the right dress? Like, yeah, I've worn spangs. It's a terrible experience. Like, it is, but it so makes you look amazing. Spanx. But no, this, this is spanks. adding, but that's a thing. It's like, I, I also, you could cinch yourself in, in the right spots and then like add to the right spots. You know what I mean? But it's definitely an art. Let's just put that out there. We would actually need help. 
let's just write down, let's write down this date. Um, I can't wait for your debut in the, I'm listen, you've said it. It's, it's out there in the world now. So, um, I'll Debut. be expecting mm-hmm. in January for you to be having some foam fillers. Yeah. Like Kim Kardashian going. style, you know, like I'm going to, what are those like booty pads or something? I mean, I do All have right. a beauty, but I could shape it up a bit, you know, make it really pop. All right, R&Q community, I hope you get behind me on this. We're holding Ashley to this. I can't wait for this debut. And I mean, there are, I think there are ladies that wear very, very, very padded bras out there. Like, and I'm sure that there's ladies that wear padded, padded, um, like Spanx stuff too. So whatever, whatever makes you work. I'm going to come over it. one day in jeans with this like padded butt and you're going to be jealous. I'm wait, looking forward to it. <laughs> I can't wait. So if you want to follow House of Rivers, you can get to know all the gals. Um, you can follow at House of Rivers on Instagram. We'll tag in the show notes, show notes, H-A-U-S. And you can also follow Brooke, Trinity, and Rachel, and we'll tag them as well for you. Before we dive in, one last thing we want to share is this Saturday on December 12th, we are doing a an rival and queen food drive for the community. So if you are in Halifax and want to contribute, you can DM us on Instagram or shoot us an email and we'll come to your house and pick up your donation all very safely. Very safely. It's such an important time to help people in need as feed Nova Scotia, I know is, uh, always bringing in donations, but this time of year, it's like, so, so, so important to make sure that people have what they need on their table. So, we hope that we hear from everyone and that it's a huge success. I'm so excited to to kind of like, we need to put some costumes on and drive around, Sarah. We'll deck out the car. It'll be a yeah. lot of fun. All right, everyone, let's dive in. All right, let's do it. All right, Sarah and I are so excited to have the House of Rivers joining us today. I'm going to go left to right. We've got Brooke Rivers, we've got Rachel, and we've got Trinity Fox. Yay, welcome. We're so happy you're here. Thank you for having us. Yes. We're so excited to be here. Love this. Could, could each of you introduce yourselves a little bit and tell us a bit about yourself? Absolutely. So my name is Brooke Rivers. I've been doing drag for six and a half years. Um, started in Fredericton, New Brunswick, and I've been living in Halifax now for just over two years. Um, Brooke is high energy. She's going to give you choreography. She's going to death drop to the floor. She also loves sparkly things, big hair, and uh, she's fun. <laughs> She is a lot of fun. (laughs) (laughs) I also love that whole time that you were talking. All I saw was Rachel. (laughs) (laughs) She was getting ready for her moment. (laughs) Well, I'm Rachel. Um, I have been doing drag also six and a half now, right? Yeah, correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, Six and a half years. I started in Halifax, actually. Um, in a competition called the swine so it's where you get paired up with like a local drag queen and they kind of like teach you the ropes and then but you don't get to see yourself what you look like in drag until night of they get you ready out back and then put you on stage and they like have a mirror and drop the curtain and that's when you see yourself so that's how I started it was like crazy like the most intense moments of my life but I then moved to Fredericton, met these two hookers, and um, the rest was history from there, I guess. I guess Rachel has now become, um, she's a little provocative, a little <laughs> promiscuous, you know. Um, she's just here to have a good time and loves to drink. Loves. <laughs> well, oh. we love Rachel. Also, a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm Trinity Fox, and I've been doing drag for about six years, a little less than the other two by a couple months. Um, Started in Fredericton when I met Brooke. She needed another performer and decided to put me in face. And if you want to call it that, it was quite ugly back then. Um, (laughs) I got on stage and performed and did like five numbers my first night. And six years later, still here, still working together. Married that one, stay best friends with this one. She's a good third wheel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and we've heard your makeup has improved. Oh, has it ever? Mm. 
she was um, <laughs> she was butchered. She was <laughs> she was a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trinity- it takes so long to figure out, like actually figure out your look and your style and kind of what you want your aesthetic to be. Yeah, and, and I also put out there. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't listen to them. I was like, I'm fine with the way it is. I don't like doing makeup. So I'm just going to look ugly. <laughs> I like to look at it in the sense of like, it takes you so long as a human alone to like figure out who you are and all this stuff. So to start all over again and create a whole new person, obviously it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time to get to where you need to get to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's such a good perspective. I think of like what I looked like in high school versus how I wear makeup now. And yeah, those were bad days. (laughs) Even university, I we, we all glow up. Oh yeah, I I had bangs in university. Not a good look. <laughs> like straight oh across. Girl, you had curly hair with bangs. No, no, my hair's normally straight. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you were praying for me. Yeah, it's amazing I got here. <laughs> People okay. dated me. Shocking. <laughs> oh my god. So Sarah and I were lucky enough to go and see your show. Probably. Oh, a couple of weeks ago now, wasn't it, Sarah? Wigs and, and waffles. That was wigs and waffles here in Halifax at the Carlton. And that was our first ever drag show. And I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. Like I was expecting to be entertained and it be fun and loud. And it was probably like I just like really exceeded my expectations of what I thought it would be. <laughs> Thank you, you guys were a perfect way to introduce us into this world. I have to say my favorite moments and I want to hear what your favorite moments of the show, but it was at one point, I'm pretty sure, uh, Brooke rivers had someone in her crotch. That was like a lovely little moment. (laughs) Masks were being worn. So it's all good. And then uh, there were a few death drops and uh, money flying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can guess it through the money. <laughs> you come to the <laughs> River show, you're going to get everything. We're going to give you everything from choreography. We're going to make you laugh your ass off. We're going to jump around. I'm going to get on your table. Yeah. Even when she's not supposed to. I know. Yeah, um, let's talk about that real quick. She got so in trouble that, that day. day <laughs> she, really? She was the one that looked at us before we all started the show and said, Okay, so we can't like touch people today. They're really getting down on the rules with COVID and everything like that. And then who's the first one to climb all on top of someone? Literally in a booth. She can resist. Lost their laps. Yeah, I would like to say that I knew them. <laughs> I would also like to say that we have tested negative for COVID. <laughs> <laughs> That and is to, the PSA. <laughs> and to be fair, I think you actually went to university with the person that you did that. So there is a connection. There's like some, exactly, exactly. I knew her from a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen Felt her safe. That's so I funny. Yeah, Ashley brings up a great point. It was our first drag show and what an experience it was. Like, I can't believe how has this become House of Rivers? Like, where did you start? Because you each had your own individual drag journeys, which we certainly want to hear about. But tell us a little bit about House of Rivers and how it has become what it is today. Yeah, so I guess um, at the beginning, it was Brooke who had like the most experience by a couple months. Um, I met her, she put me into drag, we started working together, then Rachel showed up in Fredericton in like November of that year, of the year that we all started, yeah. and we started working with her, we hated each other, um, but we worked together, no. we became best friends, you know? <laughs> things changed, <laughs> things changed <laughs> drastically, um, we figured out that we all liked doing choreo, stuff like that, and then we really just wanted to make what looks like a girl group. We just so that's the inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> mission. We like the same types of like girl groups and like music kind of thing. And then we just like clicked as people and as friends. And I think that's why the three of us have stuck together is because we're not just friends in drag, but we're also like best friends as, as in drag. Yeah. Oh, that is beautiful. And what was the original inspiration, Brooke, for like wanting to start this? Um, when I was when we were living in New Brunswick, there wasn't much of a drag scene really. There was drag in Halifax, absolutely, but New Brunswick there wasn't much. And we just like saw it as an opportunity to take what we did well and and grow, push it through the province. So we had an opportunity to go 
any any city in New Brunswick that wanted to have us, we would come. We so when we first started, we were honestly just performing for a couple free drinks. Yeah, you know, and from there we've learned to market ourselves. We know what we can do. We've stepped up our our makeup, our looks, our costumes, our choreography, and we make sure to give people the show that um, they want and that they deserve. I love that. What did it feel like the first time you stepped out on stage and like had had your moment? Terrible. What does that feel like? Scary <laughs> as hell. Yours is scarier than ours. Yeah, though, yeah. that was so scary. Cause like we were out back and like, we're in this tiny little room and there's like 10, 15 of us back there. And like, everyone's trying to get ready real quick and whatever. But then like, once you're ready, you have no clue what you look like, like I said, and you go out and it's like this packed room full of people, like over a hundred people for sure. Yeah. And you're like all tucked and cinched and all in weird spots. And you have to then perform for all these people and a panel of judges. So you're like, all right, well, if I mess this up, then there goes my career in this. Like, (laughs) it was so scary. It sounds like yours. So tell us a bit more about this like swine experience because how, how did you even choose to take part in this? So (laughs) I know who does that to themselves who in their right mind is like, "Mm, I'm going to like get up and drag and not know what I look like. No, like I would, if I could do it all again, I probably would do it the same way. Mind you, we have had a full circle moment with Rachel where last year, last year, two years, something like that. We actually were the mothers putting someone in drag at swan. Yeah. (gasps) So okay. he has had a full circle. So it was moment. really cool. You could yeah, feel their at pain. First, at first, I guess like I, I had seen like I've been to the swine before, so I knew what it was all about. But I never had thought about doing it myself. But then I, I started being friends with a few of the queens in the city when mm-hmm. I was like, just turning nineteen and stuff. And they were like, "Oh yeah, you should try it and like reach out to so and so." So you reach out to the people, then you get like put into this pot of names, and then they all pick a name, and like you get matched up with a certain person. Um, and I got matched up with El Noir, who is a pretty big name in the Queen community. Um, and yeah, I just met with—I literally met with her twice. Before. Twice. Did you paint your face? Wow. She painted and my. She- she painted my face once before I went to the show. So she is the one who kind of crafted your f- first like coming out look. Is this? Yes. I okay. Don't like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I love her, love her, but I do not look like that anymore. I so like, I guess if you so like if you look at my face and you look at their faces, I use my natural eyebrows. I paint a lot softer lot prettier no I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean I'll just say I wish my makeup like I wish I could look as beautiful as any of you <laughs> yeah and so we do have this recording released on YouTube so if you're listening to us be sure to check out our YouTube because then you can actually see the beautiful ladies and all of their all their glamour <laughs> yeah do a little pose <laughs> <laughs> we're feeling festive. We're red. Little yeah. Christmas tree. Right. Yeah, we're actually shooting a video after this. Yeah. So amazing, amazing. So, so festive. So was this kind of typical of how you get into drag? Is someone helps you create your first look? Then, like Rachel, that was your experience. But how was it for for like Brooke and Trini? Brooke put me in drag the first time, but Brooke put herself in drag. Yeah. So for myself, when I wanted to start doing drag, I saw that where we we were living, they were having like a pride competition kind of thing for drag. And I was honestly just a big fan of RuPaul's Drag Race and like, I just like drag culture. And I was like, oh, and I have a background in like theater and dance from growing up. So I was like, I could probably do this, right? So like I went and bought that cheap little wig. I went to Value Village and got some shoes and stuff. And then just walked myself down to the club and and did it. And won the competition. I won. (laughs) Oh yeah. why I'm addicted to doing drag. <laughs> <laughs> However, when I like, I would literally just like sit and watch YouTube videos and try to do a face. And there was an eyebrow up here, and like, you know, no, like lips, just little, little, little baby lips. <laughs> the little lips, baby lips. <laughs> but, yeah. She's changed. She's grown. As well, we've all have mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. And how did you feel after when you kind of went back 
off stage and how did that first experience feel? Oh, like I was honestly like, can I swear on this? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was shitting myself backstage. <laughs> like shitting oh, myself. Like, oh, yeah, I caught you earlier <laughs> like, going to sing. <laughs> you were like <laughs> You're allowed. We give I you was permission. Shitting myself backstage. And before I went on, but then I was like, you know what? I've got this. I pr- practiced this little choreography, a little, little routine kind of thing. And I went out and did it. And I think I did like two or three numbers that first night. And at the end of the night, I was like, wow, I did that. <laughs> wow. It just felt like so like liberating. Let's just go out. And I remember there was like uh, some drunk guy came and tipped me a $5 bill. And it was just like, I was like, wow, I did that. And it was good. And the people clapped. And they liked it. it. Yeah. And then I think I just yeah, like, there was a lot of money flowing around at the Carlton when Sarah and I were there. And yeah. luckily, a friend of ours, Nicole, who I think um, you may know from House of Eights, is that yeah. what the yeah. dance is? And she came prepared with like five dollars and all this like cash for us to be throwing around, which was so fun. I, you ladies some, work hard for that money. People need to like start doing drag because I got to say sometimes oh the gosh. tips at drag shows are unreal. The, mm-hmm. the community in Halifax has been nuts this, this <laughs> yeah. last half year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think Amazing. you bring like just like the talent that each of you have and plus what goes into it because honestly, like we didn't know what to expect and then these fabulous women come out in the most outrageous costumes we've ever seen. <laughs> and yeah. It's obviously quite a development, which is yeah. crazy. Do you each remember the first performance you gave? Like what song or number you did? Yeah. yeah. What were they? Wow. Um, I did. <laughs> I hate it. the song now. <laughs> they made me do it recently and I hate it. Like sure. I will never do the song ever again. But I did um, Somebody Loves You by Betty Who. It's like this random song. Like she's not like huge or anything. She's obviously famous but anyways it's like a sl- medium slow song I don't know it's kind of weird like but tempo for yeah sure. but it's like strutting song. yeah and I made it very sexual because when you first start I don't know what it is but you think everything is like touch my body up in your touch your hair, hair. Like, that's the that's all you do as a new queen so I was like crawling on the ground and like one of the judges literally said like oh my God, you should win right now because your pussy is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Trinity, what about you? What was your first number? I think my very first one was Army of Me by Christina Aguilera. That was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I wore, I wore this <laughs> tight, like, pleather black dress that had rips in it, no body. So, like, it was my boy body, the tiniest of boobs it was bad (laughs) the number i think but like it was it was interesting yeah but you were in a safe environment new brunswick wasn't used to to queens so this was a good place to start exactly mine was um right now by rihanna and then i was i did a lot of rihanna for a long time started doing drag Mm -hmm. um I remember because I had just started, I didn't want to go buy a bra. So I <laughs> I was at the dollar store and I got a bra, uh, like a bandeau bralette. Yeah. So I just wore that with some sock titties. <laughs> and mid number, they were about mm, somewhere between my, <laughs> and my stomach. <laughs> right. It, it shifted mid performance, you know? Every girl knows about that. Any strapless bra, we've all been out to a bar dancing and at one point find it down around our stomach. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that we, we all stuffed relate. ourselves. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just mean it slides down. Oh, yeah. 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 It, you got to hike those girls up. I did go buy a bra for the next show. Yeah. You got to lock those that. babies in. Speaking of stuffing yourself, um let's <laughs> I know that sounded very sexual it wasn't but stuffing bras where are we <laughs> going? <laughs> yeah Sarah tell me more how, how like how do you transform your body <laughs> um so for like these are our boobs <laughs> beautiful yeah just a nice little what, what is it little cut no it's just a little piece of foam like so it's like a piece of foam. Do you guys make those? And then yeah. you like wrap it in pantyhose. So oh. it like 
yeah. kind of com compact. That's a nice D cup. So actually with us stuffing with socks and tissues, actually, that was not what we should have been doing as teenagers because- Well, I didn't do really that because nice I always had boobs. <laughs> I always like I was now, bro. can't backpedal now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's um, all be honest here. Okay. So you're wearing, so you've got the foam in for the boobs, but yeah. that's not, it's not all just boobs. There's some hips. There's some butts like beautiful. Give it <laughs> give it this. Oh, oh, oh my God. Okay, and as a stand up too, I guess. Uh, I mean, you guys need to make our bodies look like this. Like, I know. What I, the for everyone listening to the podcast, you need to go watch it right now online. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Like most like, women would I kill can't. for these figures. The curves. Small, yes. Small, small. Just yeah. carve that out with a turkey carver. And you got a <laughs> body. In the shape of Voila. Africa. Shape of Africa. No. no. <laughs> that is what our heads are. It's foam in the shape of Africa that was carved with a turkey carver. What? How did you guys figure this out? It's like an old drag trick. Like, yeah, it's been a thing for years. Okay. Every queen, you, you can find it online. Yeah. A lot of queens just pass it down. So you have adjusted, have you adjusted your bodies over time? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we all started, none of us really wore body a whole lot. Like, mm. Brooke was a stick. As, like, as a, as a just boy, a stick. I've got no hips. I've got no butt. I got nothing. So it's just literally a little six feet of straight gentleman uh, <laughs> and for a while i thought that was a cute look you know like, oh, she's a skinny girl she's got no ass <laughs> it's not cute no it's not cute i think i was like the opposite though because when i got paired with my mother she's a bigger girl and so she's like you're gonna be huge you're gonna be massive yeah so my ass was like like right now it's like this it was like out to here because like i had my hip pad okay put stuff underneath oh, yeah. of it to like pop it out. Oh my God, it was too much. I think I remember that from the picture yeah, actually. It yeah. was huge. That's I was stupid. like, okay, I need to trim this down a little. So mm -hmm. then I took it down and then it was like too small because like, I don't know, I just like filled out in different places and whatever. So I needed to like find that happy medium, I guess. Yeah. And then these, this, the phone- It must be so hard to dance. Uh, I don't notice it now. No, anymore. it just feels like no. a full body at this point. Oh, everything's locked in yeah I love well, the, the only issue is the boobs move. the boobs move and i find sometimes my hips will like slide down mm -hmm. because you get so sweaty so then like the foam right. starts like, sliding down your skin and yeah yeah the, the hips are held in by like a few pairs of dance tights so they're thick so we're beautiful women but we sweat like hockey players and we yeah. smell like hockey players sometimes you know <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll get like undressed out back and like Obviously, I can't reach something in the back, and so they have to unzip me or whatever. And I'm like, I'm so sorry for what you're about to touch back there. Like, I like, I am a sweaty mess. In sweat. I just yeah. lost three pounds. You know, yeah. in sweat. It is a full blown workout. Yeah, I think so. I would probably be like 600 pound light if I didn't do drag because I just sweat out all the calories. The top. But isn't that fabulous? I love it. Yeah. And Another so. Reason. And, and then of course we have to know, so the hips are foam and the booty foam, but you're building it up. But now where does your dick go? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's such that. a good oh my God. Yeah. transition. Yeah. No. Just, so just cut to it. We so. gotta know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was gonna say, who wants to take that? <laughs> so I guess it like, it stays where it is. You don't take it off. It, it's not like, <laughs> It's not removable. Yeah, Mr. Potato Head. It doesn't just pop off, you know? Um, Thank so, God. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> so it, at least I don't know what these two do. Because um, she actually tucks. So I actually tuck. They just push it all together. Yeah. But I, so it's before you like hit puberty, your testicles actually are like up inside you because mm -hmm. like, you have obviously, so it's like, a woman's ovaries. This is what I've been told. She's don't, having a full biology don't, don't presentation over here. But I want listening. this. Um, we don't have them, so we want to know. Testicles are like your ovaries, and they're like up in these little sockets until we hit puberty, and then they drop and sit in your sack, you know? Boom. <laughs> yeah, she's like, you know? Boom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a uh, Boom, so I'm a teenager. All you, do, all you do is like pop them back up in there, like back up inside those two little pockets, and then you take your dick and you just yank it back to your fucking asshole you basically fuck yourself 
pretty much. Yeah. And then you tape it's it wrapped around. So or does I it stay? Tape, um, I use like a little pair of underwear, and what I do is I turn them backwards, and like a little. Um, is that a brief? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, a brief. Yeah. I turn it backwards so like the butt parts in the front, so I can really like pull it and like get everything in one spot. And then I have to like pull it up my butt into a thong, pretty much. Like it's so all, full wedgy. Yeah. Mm. Also, when you first start out, tucking is so uncomfortable. Yeah. But like especially the going back up inside. But once you're used to it, it's just kind of like, okay, this is nothing now. Yeah. Hmm. interesting i really didn't know that this is what was happening to be perfectly honest yeah i hope <laughs> for the period of time i did the tape thing mm -hmm. and i i gotta Same. give it i gotta give it up to the queens out there that like the tape because that's you gotta do a whole lot of um manscaping manscaping, manscaping and if you gotta pee during the night you're screwed i was because i was thinking with the tape i was like i can't imagine taking that off mm. oh yeah well, by the end of the night, you're pretty sweaty, though. So that's I was true. just thinking that that may help relieve the pain of the tape. Another thing, too, though, like peeing, I can't. Like, mm -hmm. once I'm tucked and in, unless I'm like, it's like we do a show and then we go out afterwards in drag, then I'm like, okay, I don't care now. Like, I'm going to pee. These ones will like pee halfway through a show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I can't do that. Like, I'm not like mm -hmm. trying to take all this down and like, stand there with it like no not not half of it not <laughs> well especially if you're enjoying alcohol the whole time you're gonna have to pee eventually so you've developed a skill i know how to hold my bladder <laughs> Damn. I th again i think you and kim k i'm pretty sure she doesn't pee in most of her outfits so isn't that one that like nude one that she wore or whatever she's like i didn't pee all night and i was like okay you're like me too yeah you're like i got this yeah I love this so much. Okay. I feel like now, first of all, power to you because a lot of credit due for all of that. <laughs> yes. So well, much goes into good. it, but you look fabulous. Like it's incredible. One of the things that you mentioned is your mother, El Noir. Yes. And we've heard of this a little bit in the drag community. And I certainly, um, through watching a few RuPaul's Drag Race episodes have heard of like mothers and sisters and t tell us about the lingo. What does it all mean? So like technically Brooke is my drag mother because she put me in drag the first time. So she's the one who like uh... helped create me. So then she's my drag mother. So okay. then they, Rachel's is L because of the swine. And then Brooke created herself so she didn't have a drag mother, but she actually met Elle after like a year. I don't know, like three or four months. Three or four after. months, and Elle adopted her. So yeah. Elle's kind of technically my my adopted mother as well. Yeah. Um, but then it's weird because like I Elle like put me in drag what, what twice, and then I left the city. So like, mm -hmm. and we just like didn't keep in touch or anything for a little while, and so like I kind of had to like rebuild myself yeah. because I had no clue like both times like she just did my makeup like put me in body picked my outfits whatever and so I had to like rebuild who I was and then that's when I met these two and like we kind of just we all just play off each other when it comes to makeup numbers outfits everything like yeah yeah so that like we are the house of rivers house meaning like our, we're a family um we are sisters the only reason we're well, the only reason we're called House of Rivers is because <laughs> of these two. <laughs> when we first started, I was doing a lot of like the bookings and making sure we had gigs and we were busy, busy, busy as always. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, oh, like, let's not call it the House of Rivers. I was pretty sure I was like the Freddy Girls or something <laughs> stupid. So, I don't know. I was like, let's just call it something like as a girl, girl group name. And they said, no, like, we'll take your name now. Six years later, they probably regret that, but um, it just means like, I'm not the technical mother of our house. You know, I do a lot of work. That's what people don't seem to understand is that she does like a lot of the work. Like she sews the outfits, she books a lot of the gigs, she does that kind of stuff. But like when it comes to choreographing, working together, any of that, we're all equal. Exactly. But people look at it yeah. because it's her name as she is the mother. So it's really frustrating because like, will like be somewhere with a bunch of the queens and they're like oh yeah your mother da, 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 da. and i'm like N who 
What? Yeah, I, yeah. I brought myself up. Yeah. Thanks. Emancipated at the age of one. What you know about it? <laughs> that was a big one. Yeah. I'm no, but that's <laughs> but that's fabulous to know it's that you operate and consider like work as a family together, and that it is something that you're all contributing to, like creating the House of Rivers experience. And I know at the beginning, like we were very jealous when one of us would get booked on solo gigs, but in the last like year or two, we've become really confident and just supportive of each other so if one of us gets booked for a gig it's like okay what can we do to help you let's get it set up like she got booked for a gig in Cape Breton and uh Brooke decided to choreograph a backup dance that me and Brooke did as boys so we went to Cape Breton with her and danced backup as boys Mm -hmm. stop well and you all have such different style so people probably kind of gravitate towards one of your kind of performances or what you bring to the stage and everyone kind of probably has, I, I was really surprised. Like I was so excited each time you all came out. I'm like, Oh, what's this one going to be like? Because you all had your own vibe and style. They're all absolutely amazing. But I really thought that was super cool. How, um, the show just like gelled together. It was so different, but so well done. Like I was so impressed. You guys were somersaulting across the <laughs> stage. I think that's what we go for too is like and we get we get ripped up a lot because calling them space babe we're all like we're three cis white queens it is what it is but a lot of people are like oh you guys there's no diversity between all of you and I think that's for me it baffles me because like I can't do what she does or what she does and they can't do what the fuck I do so how are we all the same? Yes, we all dance. Yes, we all can lip sync. Yes, we all look good. But like we bring a different energy to our numbers and to what we put out there. Yeah, that's what we want to give uh-huh. as a full show. We don't want it to be the same, 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 you know? So that's why we make sure that there's all types of numbers, all types of songs. We're going to give you slow stuff, fast stuff, group stuff, solos, do. And none of us like doing the same songs, mm. like at all. Like we did a show recently that was for my birthday and to retire her last name um and it we had to do numbers for each other that we'd done in the past so I did a song that Rachel does and I walked off stage and I went out back and I was like girl you do that so much better <laughs> like I was like I was not comfortable I was not living my life for that song like <laughs> but it's like fun to dedicate it to each other that's and really also nice the co- comedy kind of aspect that you bring to the show too I thought that was so fun and I wasn't expecting that either I loved it I mean like we put comedy into our numbers but also like when we're just hosting on the mic these two together on the mic <laughs> we kill me. Me. this is a new thing though, like, anything we I at least me I don't know like <clears throat> I was fine being on the mic but like coming up with like conversation banter I don't know was harder for me like I could be like oh this person's next that person's next whatever but like having conversations and like actually hosting was like just a new thing for me and then once we started doing wigs and waffles it was just this one time her and I like opened up the show just chatting and whatever and we both walked off stage and we're like holy shit we were just really funny it was so <laughs> Like, and then so, since then it's just like well from there we started deciding that we like we always open with a group number or like occasionally like a duet or something um so we open with that and then we normally have a guest performer right after that and then I always take the first hit so like I have to run and change so literally we do the group number I we literally end our pose and I sprint out back <laughs> every single time and I'm out back changing listening to these two like <laughs> It's so good. But it's nice how you've pulled that together. And I think it just shows a bit how you've um, grown into your, like your group and House of Rivers as each of your own individual personas. One of the things that you kind of touched on is that, you know, you each are so different. You each bring something different to this experience. Like, what is this for you? Is it like an artistic expression or a sexual expression? Or um, is it a mix of both? Or is it about the performance? I would say for myself, it's like, it's a very like artistic moment that I get to express myself. Um, It's grown me as a person outside of this as well. Like, you create this other persona and then all of a sudden you're molding that into your life 
So drag has just become a hobby, a way to express myself, and just honestly a blast. Oh, has it changed? Like, do you find it's changed you in your own like regular day-to-day life? Oh yeah, you can't get me to shut up now. (laughs) (laughs) You probably kind of found a part of you inside that maybe just wasn't alive yet and now it's alive and you can just like become whoever you want to be in whatever version you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Rachel? I kind of want to hear each for each of you what drag is for you. Yeah, my turn. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> you were about to speak. Don't play. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Um, for me, it's definitely like an artistic thing for sure. Like I just love like being on stage and this sounds super conceited. I love attention. <laughs> if all eyes are on me. Really? I'm in my prime I don't care what I'm doing what I have to do to get there but I just love and like making people happy because like it's the world is fucked up the world is fucked up so if I can give somebody a little bit of joy a little bit of happiness for even three minutes like then I've I'm happy I can walk away happy and has it changed you like in your overall life 100%. I am so much more confident. Okay, so I've loved makeup for like a really long time, even when I was in like junior high, high school. But I was also nervous to like wear makeup in public and it really expressed myself. And I think drag has really like gave me the opportunity to like blend the two. And like I wear makeup on a daily basis, like if I feel like putting it on, sometimes I'm lazy as hell, but I, I love being like, a boy, but also like really glam, really pretty. Like for your birthday, for mm-hmm. Dale Trinity's birthday, um, they had like, we had like a little gathering, just a few friends. And <laughs> I like wore this like sequin jacket, like just the jacket and like a pair of high heels. And like, it was right after a show. So I just had a full face of makeup. And I think I was the most confident I've ever been in oh, my whole time. entire life. Amazing. So good. Like I just, I've found like, I don't know what is next to come for me or whatever, but like I've found that I'm like really enjoying crossing both worlds right now and having fun. Oh, I love that. And how about you, Brooke? Like what, like what is drag for you? What does it let you express? Drag for me is like a way to just perform. And um, I've always been into performing theater and dance and stuff. And this is like the best of all the worlds. I get to dabble into costuming and fashion and makeup and hair. So there's so many artistic avenues that I get to, to see. Um, I get to do it with my two, like two of my best friends, my husband and my best friend. We get to travel, we get to just have fun. And, that, and like Rachel said, like we bring joy sometimes to people that are having a really fucking shitty day or month or week. And it means so much that they live for it. You know, sometimes we had had children come to the show and they like are just over, come with open eyes and they just love it. Or like families that bring their children. That to me is amazing because I grew up in a very small town and like it, you know, being gay wasn't a thing and I can never would have heard of drag. And the very funny full circle event is that last summer we, they had like, I think it's their second or third year of doing pride. And we got to go and perform for them. So I got to perform in my hometown, in front of my mom and like a bunch of people. And it was a good, 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 good time. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, oh my like, gosh, that's happy. so amazing. And like, I love, I love my life as Kevin, but like, honestly, like I could do drag. I could sc- say, screw the day job and be broke. And, and I was going to say that like out of any of us, I think she's the one that loves drag the most. Oh yeah. I could guarantee you there's not a single day in her life that she's not thinking about drag or doing something for or us. doing something for us or for our shows or anything like yeah. that like it's every day i like i could not think about it for like weeks i don't like, i love drag don't get me wrong but like it's a lot when our shows had to be canceled for december it was like Oh my god, we get a break. <laughs> and I was just kidding, we're going to do the podcast yeah. and we have a video to shoot. Yeah, and, and, like, and we're doing an online pageant. Yeah. And we're like, okay. So Brooke, you have this deep love of it. Like, how has it changed you and your whole life? I mean, 
Kevin was always a more shy and reserved type of person. And Brooke was that 300% extra version of that. And I think learning to more about Brooke has made Kevin more confident as a person. Um, I love being able to be my feminine self, but it also like made me learn to love my body as Kevin as well and appreciate like, you know, working out and doing that kind of thing. So having that little balance in myself um, and just like being confident and as hell. I don't know if that made sense, but. No, it makes so much sense. I love and it. it's confident. beautiful. <laughs> I have <laughs> to words out. Sometimes she starts to go French and then all of a sudden you just hear. <laughs> <laughs> I know that um, you mentioned that the community here in Halifax has been amazing to you. So does it, do you guys get a lot of messages kind of and positive things coming your way because you're able to bring that happiness to people or perhaps there's someone that's thinking about doing or experimenting with drag themselves and they're not really sure like what to do next or if they're going to be accepted. Um, do you guys kind of cross those situations? Yeah, we definitely run into a few and then, um, we actually recently have two drag daughters that uh, have started doing drag. So they've done, one of them did two shows. She started in the swine with us and then has done one show since. And then another one just wanted to try it. She was uh, one of our backup dancers and decided that he just wanted to get in drag and give it a go. And we put her in face and threw her on stage and she outdanced all of us. and. Oh. Stop. Yeah. I hate it so much. Because I thought I could dance. Yeah. And then I met her and I hate her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. Exactly. You must have a lot of big fans too, because I feel like there were, I looked around the room and I was actually kind of just observing the crowd and who was there. And it was so nice to see so many different people, different ages that were you know, standing up, clapping. There was one lady I actually saw who was there by herself and she was drinking wine, I think, and was just so happy. I saw her like clapping and enjoying it. And I, that just made me so oh, happy. Yeah. Like everyone with filled with such joy. Yeah, like, So it must make you guys feel like a million bucks to like bring that and like feel that inside. People of all ages come to our shows. Honestly, we had elderly people. We had families that come sometime because our brunch is open to... To, to the families and the children. We just we, make sure we don't swear at those ones. Yeah, <laughs> we do put a little discretion uh, is advised kind of situation. We'll yeah. tell you yeah. like, I might swear. Could we slip out. Warn the children. <laughs> um, we have people of the um, LGBTQ community that come. We have just some beautiful cis people, like straight people that come. It's just, and then like we've like grown a fan base over this time and we love people who are dedicated to us so much. Like we have one person who travels here to see our shows and we actually bought them a hat that said, no, or a fanny, fanny pack that said House of Rivers on yeah. it. Like we used to, and they bought Rachel a hat. That's how much they like are dedicated to us. They live in Toronto or yes, Glasgow or somewhere something? Somewhere like yeah. that. And drives here for our shows. Like a lot. Yeah. I yeah, the first that. time that we performed uh, during Pride on main stage, she, um came up to me after the show and was like I got something for you and literally got a hat made with my name on it and I was like what the hell is going on right now like and she I, has a matching one right? yeah and then got yeah. a matching one for herself and like I still like to this day I'm not used to like people being like oh my god we love you like you guys are amazing mm -hmm. it's still so foreign to me that like people know who we are without even meeting us like some people will come to our show and be like, oh my God, this is our first show, but we've been watching you on Instagram and all these things. And I'm like, thanks. Trinity <laughs> and I have been out just downtown by the waterfront. And there's this guy who came up to us and he's like, you guys are the House of Rivers. And we were just as boys. So that means that they've been to a show or see us on Instagram and have seen our like our boy profiles as well. Yeah. So for them to know that we were the House of Rivers. Like, yeah, that is mind blowing. I think you give people like a lot of, I don't know what it is, whether it's just like fun or freedom to self-express. Like, I think that's what you are giving people when they show up. Cause like you said, there was like a, like an 75, 80 year old woman next to us, like dancing when we were there. 
People are probably so curious to see the transformation too, when they look you up and see kind of like how you become, you know, these personas. Cause it is super impressive. Like you guys look like a million, million dollars. <laughs> so we want to know, I think there was one little incident at the show, very minor, but is there anything like a malfunction or something? Like what's the funniest thing that's happened to any of you at a show? Oh, yes. Girl, you gotta call me. I like to <laughs> <laughs> come back. I don't know. I like. Are you talking like when I fell in behind? Was I? Was that that show? I think so. You did. It was. Step it was right by us. us. Yeah, I didn't but even I see think... actually because it was behind me. I, we I, tried I, to catch you. Friggin' like turned around, and, like twerking. Yeah, I turn around. And I can't see Rachel anymore because she's on the ground. <laughs> I think there was a quick gasp. Yeah, it happens to me all the time. Like I don't really. Know, well, that kind of stuff, like falling or slipping or anything like that. Now losing wigs. These ladies can tell you about mm-hmm. that. I can tell you about that. Yeah. <laughs> Many a time, not very recently for myself. I don't think. Our, our new drag daughter. Oh, our new drag, drag daughter girl. lost hers twice at the last show, <laughs> but there, because she dances so hard. We were like, okay, oh you're going to do a little class with us um, on how to dance with a wig. Because yeah. <laughs> it's not the same as dancing with your real hair. My favorite time is in Fredericton. I was dancing and performing. I think I was doing Pound the Alarm by Nicki Minaj. Yeah. And I like turned my head. And as I turned my head, the wig went off, flying upwards. When I finished turning around, I caught the wig in the air. I turned around put that little wig right back on <laughs> a little two-step and we're good to go it was actually the, so the show awesome. must go on <laughs> there was one time though which oh. is super embarrassing for me oh. um we were performing a trio <laughs> but it was like a night that like i had to perform and i asked them to do it with me loaded just absolutely shit-faced and it was um, bang bang, yeah. yeah, bang bang. And I was Jesse J. And I hit this big note, and I was up on the stage, and I caught my heel in the box, trying to step back. So don't I go right back onto my ass, and my wig falls off. <laughs> oh my gosh! So then I stood up and just kind of looked around. This one takes her wig off. <laughs> To join, tells her to take her wig off. Then they look at me, take your wig off, take your wig off. I was like, I'm like, no, she was gonna be pissed. So I was like, (laughs) so they supported me and took their wigs off in solidarity. We love that. And that's how you finish the number. That's awesome. Wait, Liz, at the end of Friday, the bar was packed. Yeah. Literally. But that's kind of fun that you have these because it's real life. So nothing's ever going to be perfect. No. Yeah. Shit happens. Awesome. Oh, my girl, I, we've gone to, like, we went, we were living in Fredericton, and we went to a gig in Bathurst. I didn't bring my hips. I had to do a whole show without an ass. <laughs> so you didn't, good. you didn't improvise. You weren't going to stuff anything else down there. Just some hams. Yeah. <laughs> and cutlets. I had to improvise on stuff before. Like, we'll go away places, and I'll, like, forget titties all the time. I don't know. I always forget my titties. But I'll take like from the hotel, I'll take like face cloths, the white face cloths all the time are in my titties. Oh, I also say that <laughs> I apologize to any hotels in the greater Atlantic uh, provinces area for fucking up your towels. <laughs> <laughs> These faces don't come off easy because we will just use those white towels and just take all of this off and then she brown. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's so true. I absolutely love, love, love this. Can you tell us before we wrap, like, what is your favorite thing about this queen community and drag overall? Like, what do you love about it? Um... <laughs> or, or what do you oh, not love about it? Maybe, yeah, maybe there's lots to think. not like. It's, it's hard. It's a doggy dog world out there. Mm-hmm. I'm not, is it? I uh, like okay, we've met some great people. Everyone is great. But when I'm telling you, you are fighting tooth or nail to find your spot. And like, when we first moved here, it was rough. Like we had to create our own shows. We weren't getting invited to a lot of other shows. But then once we got here and started putting in the work and they saw us putting in the work, then people started accepting us more. It's the same thing right now. Like if someone new were to come to the city and we were to see them, like, it's not like we don't like you. It's a 
you need to prove yourself. You, you need to like, because at the end of the day, it's a city full of talented performers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you're not going to be able to keep up with it, then why would I invite you to a show? Do you know what I mean? Once you yeah. put in the work and you show that you're like committed and you're willing to do it, then the sense of community that we have within all of us drag performers in the city is, is amazing, honestly. Yeah. Like you can, like we have a lot of, of friends who are performers and you just say, hey, I need a wig like this. I don't have it. Can I borrow it? Mm -hmm. There's someone who will answer that call. I need yeah. a, I need a glove, a, a red glove. You got it? Like Yeah, we all share. We'll, if you need something, you give it. And one thing nice. that I was super happy about with us is that once we got this gig at the Carlton, we've been able to invite so many different performers. Like we make sure that we have one to two guests every show. And I think we've only repeated our daughters. Yeah. I yeah. don't think we re we've repeated any other guests. Mm -hmm. It has been someone new every single time. And we bring in kings, queens, non-binary performers, anyone on the, in the drag spectrum. Yeah. You're welcome. Oh. Well, we can't wait until we get to come and see another show. We were so excited for the Christmas show, but we know there'll be so many beautiful shows coming and Sarah and I will definitely be there to take it all in. Absolutely. And it's nice to hear how you are so kind of inclusive and, and bringing such variety into your own shows. Like we love to hear that. And it was great to see you had a drag king at your show. So that was fun. It was our first time experiencing that as well. And the, the drag king sang live that one, right? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, it's very talented. Something we don't do. No. <laughs> no. But, you, but you can't do it all. Like you're transforming. That's enough. <laughs> so yeah. true. We know that you ladies are super busy right now, but we want to know what are you the most excited about right now? Like what's lighting you up? Um. <laughs> you're looking <laughs> around. <laughs> We're just ready for whatever's gonna come our way, I think is the best way to say it. Like we are, we're hungry for more. We want to travel it once everything opens up, obviously, mm -hmm. not coronavirus, <laughs> but we just, we just wanna do more. We wanna grow. 2020 was a, a, a rough year for everyone and it was a year of a lot of learning. For us, we somehow, found a little niche market and like we kind of hopped on that train and rode it we somehow and, thrived and, yeah and i think this was the best year for us and i can't wait to see where we go from here i guess after things open back up we love it are you are you going bigger than atlanta canada can we i maybe, don't know maybe take a little plane across some water <laughs> for rivers for season two of canada's drag race i'm gonna say yes <laughs> I say it at every show. You put it yes, you do. We'll be we be cheering you, gotta, you on. You have to put it out there. Season two, they gotta have someone from the East Coast. So why? No. Let's start a campaign. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. We are into that. Before we wrap, we'd like to play a game with all of our guests called Queenie Grams. Mm -hmm. Aptly named for this group, I have to say. Um, it's a it's a made up game. It's super easy. We're just going to go around and each of you pick a number between one and 100 and I'll ask you a question. Oh my God. Oh, terrifying. <laughs> Who's up first? Don't be scared. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go 74. 74. Ooh. Let's see what we have. All right. 74. She's a whore. If you could be <laughs> any celebrity, dead or alive, who would it be? Oh my Ooh, god. That's a good, good one. <laughs> if that I, is a good one. One could like I five with someone. Yeah. Anyone. Um that is a tough This one. could be inspiration for your next show. Like <laughs> literally the moment you asked that question, I had my answer. Oh I what's know. your answer? Christina Aguilera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't fucking know. Um, can I I, I got like two. Tell us both. Give us two. I would say one of them right now would be Dua Lipa. Just because mm -hmm. I live for her music. She's so hot. And what she's doing right now is amazing. And she's gorgeous and stunning. And I feel like I can just take that. Um, let me just jump on that train. And then the, I, I'd probably say um, Raven from Drag Race. Or no, oh. uh, no, Alyssa Edwards. Oh, okay. Okay. she's gorgeous nice. she's stunning she owns a dance studio she's a mm -hmm. dancing queen i love that amazing 
We love this. Rachel, do you want to throw in who your celebrity would be? Oh my God. <laughs> would it be whoever's wig that you have on your head? Right. No, I want to be able to be Ariana Grande. Now, who would I want to be? Do you know who I'd, you know who I'd want to be? Tell us. Oh, wow, I have some good friends here. Um, a girl named Jessie Nielsen from Oh, Atlantis. yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. She is the most stunning person I've ever met in the whole entire world. So though. when we were <laughs> Little Mix, it has been a thing since day one <laughs> that she is Jesse. Like it's Amazing. just been a thing. They she does her makeup pretty much like her when yeah, she's so in drag. Like they look so the similar. manager at the Carlton, she is from the UK. And that's where this girl group is from. And when we like first started meeting her and whatever, she was like, you know, you really remind me of someone. I was like, oh, really? Who? She's like, Jesse Nelson from Little Mix. And I was like, stop, <laughs> like freaking out. I think you were wearing that wig one time and she like, yeah. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I love that. All right, Rachel, give us a number. Um, well, I have to go with 69. <laughs> oh, <laughs> of course. Well, you'll love this question then. Could you please tell us what your guilty pleasure is? <laughs> we will not be answering that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, guilty pleasure. Oh my God, that's hard. <laughs> a show? I don't know, like a show or something. Yeah, or like something you like to do at home, like. No, I don't. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's Trinity's. Uh, that's mine. Wrestling for some reason. Um, really? I like. I will sit on my phone and just watch YouTube videos all day long. Like, it's terrible. Like, if I were to go on my phone and look at my view time, like, it's probably sickening. She has been sitting in her car before <laughs> and just doesn't go into her apartment <laughs> or like is leaving the mall where she works and sits in her car for like an hour. I. Now. I kid you not, I sat in the mall parking lot for an hour and a half watching videos of like military coming home or like gender <laughs> reveals. Those, okay, that's my answer. Military <laughs> coming home. And you I, I could watch, oh, I ball my face off. <laughs> like, I kid you not, I could watch it for hours. So I if we looked up your search history, it would be pretty entertaining of like all the different videos that you come across yeah, you're on youtube <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love, that. love that trinity give us a number my favorite number is nine nine all right let's see what we've got here all right where are we yes what is the all-time best dog breed oh <laughs> no I'll say Change my number. <laughs> Are you not a dog lover? She's a cat. She's a cat. Don't worry. Here's we're gonna we're gonna pick another one for you. Something that's more up, uh, more up the alley of what we're talking about today. Let me find something good for us here. All right. Why don't you tell us what your most recent Google search is? Oh dear God. Where's my phone? That's always a dangerous question because when that comes up, I'm like. I won't tell you where <laughs> <laughs> Military video. <laughs> <laughs> military porn. <laughs> military porn. I love that. She likes the military genre. She likes to cry at the coming home videos. <laughs> I don't know where my phone is. But... Mine is lame. Mine is about where dogs need to sleep when they come home as puppies. Very into the puppies right, my, right now. Mine was Thorn Bloom's Halifax because we were looking up last night what time they were about losing my phone. Definitely and then there was Rachel. <laughs> it, it definitely was. It was um, Ariel Versace getting fucked. <laughs> <laughs> She's a queen from Drag Race that, oh my God, her boyfriend. Woo wee! I turned into it. Oh, I don't do that. Oh, it's um Britney Spears' new song. <laughs> oh. She has a new song. She Spears. That she recorded in 2016. Oh, yeah. So that's what it. Up. What is her new song? Poor Britney. Yeah, uh, what you really do clear your history. Oh, I clear. Well, I don't want people seeing what I look at. Uh, I mean, I think that's smart. I do that now too because of this question. 
Right. <laughs> um, swimming the stars. Is what this is about. All right. All right. Everyone give Brittany some love, some yeah. swimming the stars love. Ash, you want to pick a number to wrap us up? More than love right now. I'm going to pick 90. Nine zero or one nine? Nine zero. If it's a good one, give it. All right. Give it. All right. What personality trait drives you crazy? What? Oh my God. There's probably too many. I think. Preach. Um, I want to say, yeah, I was gonna say people that are just like fucking rude. Like I know that was kind of like an oxymoron, but people that just don't know when to be polite or no, sorry, like how to be polite and like be, I don't know, disingenuous people. You can, I can see right through them too. Like people that are full of shit, like no one cares. Like just be yourself. I don't like when people try and be someone else. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. You know. All right. I'm gonna do 98. If you could be paid to endorse a product, what would it be? This is very easy. It my answer is always the same. It is always wine. And conveniently enough, this episode is actually sponsored by Luvo. So <laughs> yeah. cheers. So bad. It's good? so good. And if there Pardon? are any drag sponsors, hit me up on House of Rivers on yes, Instagram and exactly. we would love to sponsor you. <laughs> There you go. And Ali, your way. (laughs) This has been so much fun to chat with each of you and learn so much more about the House of Rivers, about each of you individually, and really about being a drag queen. Thank you so much for having us. Where can people find you? (laughs) They can find us on Instagram and Facebook, uh, House of Rivers, H-A-U-S-O-F. R-I-V-E-R-S. Love um, that. We'll tag it in the show notes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and There's they can book you for events, right? Pardon? People can book you for events, right? Yes. yes. People can book us for events. So we do have an email if you want to send us an email or just slide into the DM. So our email is houseofrivers at gmail.com. We've done, we did a bachelorette just recently. It was super fun. It was like oh my the God. wildest party yeah. in my life. So yeah. absolutely. I saw some videos from that. It looked amazing. <laughs> in that Airbnb that was warm and salt water. We jumped so we in. So got in it like this. In full yeah. drag. Listen, they, people get more than they bargain for. Yes. Yeah. They were <laughs> lucky that day. do like almost anything. Not wrong. We did a girls um, like weekend event thing that we like went and performed at a lady's house. We danced around with some babies because there were some babies there. Oh, I have Rachel, such a cute video on my phone of that. Rachel yeah. also jumped in the pool there too. Yeah. yeah. We like <laughs> slid down a slide actually into the pool. Yeah, full drag, slid down a water slide into a pool. Love that. Oh we'll Sounds like y'all things. have so much fun. Marmitas, weddings, divorces, we'll do it all for you he, folks. You yeah. always say divorces, divorces and I'm like, because it's funny. I'm trying, trying to be hint. funny. It I is think funny. someone would appreciate that for a divorce party. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. That would be probably a fabulous evening. I would hire you for a divorce party. Before we wrap, can we get everyone to stand up and give us a twirl? Because I've never yes. seen people yeah. looking so fabulous. And I think we just have to appreciate this. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look at that booty. And I just want everyone to know that Sarah and I had different shirts on. And then they came on and we had to change because they look so fabulous. Oh, um, first up, we've got Brooke Rivers. Ooh. Giving you holiday yeah. red, the three of us, by the way. A little peplum. <laughs> Love this. Oh, here comes Rachel. Oh, Mrs. Claus. A naughty Mrs. Yeah, Claus. Na- oh, look at that booty. <laughs> and here comes Trinity Fox. Oh, those cutouts. Velvet? Is that velvet? Oh, yeah, a little uh, like 70s vibe? Yes. Velvet Thank and you. shimmer. You actually, now that you've said Christina Aguilera, that's all I can think about. Like you have the vibe. The makeup vibe is definitely a little Chris. Except- it's the blonde hair. Yeah, I do normally wear blonde. So. Yeah. Oh, I like the brunette. You look so fabulous. The most okay. holiday spirit. Yeah. Yes. Ho, 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 bitch. <laughs> <It's time laughs> <to shoot>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. This was so fun. Thank, Thank you for you. having us.